going to make a video about dragon energy. The dragon. All that stuff. My inner perspective on, on the whole thing. What the dragon is, what that energy is. How it relates, intertwines, and how it is. It's all of us. It's what we are. So bear with me. And uh, keep in mind that these are only these are only things I came to inside me. It's things th these are these are ways that I've tied things together for myself to make sense of my reality. But to me, it, it relates to everyone. So I wanted to share what what I've come to, and then my son being out here at the same time. If I start to get off track, can maybe. Well, conversation might develop. That's why this is, I'm recording this and not trying to do it live. Because I want to be able to try and get out what, what I have to say, what I feel, what I think about, about this, this whole thing, the, the dragon thing. So that being said, I'm going to read a couple of things that I wrote uh, just a little bit ago to try and, try and uh, make it more coherent. So... I wrote dragon energy like for what it is. The dragon energy is, is the kundalini male female energy. Let me just read what I wrote. Kundalini male and female physical sexual energy, DNA, combining to form a new physical life. And then I wrote uh, in parentheses, uh, dragon of intertwined energies. So here I'm talking, I'm talking about the male, female, the mother and father that made us, our physical mom and dad. Their sexual energy, physical sexual energy came together with sperm and egg physically to create new life, to make creation, literally. So we're, we're intertwined already physically in our DNA. Those two strands of DNA have the DNA of our mother and father. So we have the, the masculine and feminine aspects of that energy tied together in physicality. That's why we have a body being one or the other of those two aspects. But being one or the other of those two aspects, you have to realize you're made up of both of those sides, both of those aspects, the masculine and the feminine. So to go further and deeper, now remember, this is my perspective and how I put things together to make sense of things for me. So to go further now into the consciousness part, the spiritual part of what happens when that sperm and egg come together, there's a spark, there's a spark of consciousness. So let me go into this. Uh, a divine spark of consciousness is granted to the new physical life. The combination of sperm and egg, excuse me, the combination of sperm and egg allows the spiritual consciousness to inhabit the physical body, to experience itself and its interaction with others and with nature. So all I'm saying there is when, when the mother and the father's sexual energies got them to the point to where they actually had sex and the sperm and egg came together physically, that opened the doorway or gate, so to speak, you know, however you want to put it, for an aspect, a piece, a slice of your very own divine consciousness to enter physicality and experience the world down here, right? Down here, up here, you know, however you want to look at it, it doesn't matter. So here we are in physicality with that consciousness and that consciousness that is the consciousness that we all have inside us that's kind of been hidden that realizes it's more than just the physical body and just the physical aspects. That's the spiritual part. So um, with that, now the divine, uh, divine masculine energy, divine feminine energy, look at it like that. The, when the physical mother and father your physical mom and dad came together in the world and made you the intertwining of DNA. The consciousness spark that was received is also a combination of masculine and feminine, but it's divine 
masculine and feminine. It's the divine overall consciousness of nature or of, I want to be careful with labels, but it's your piece of the all in everything, the divine masculine and feminine aspect tied together spiritually coming in to physical form with the physical DNA tying together, growing a physical body. That's what, that's what I'm getting at. Um, so the, the divine male energy. Okay. I, I'm going to quit with, with the labels. Now I'm just going to say the, the masculine and feminine or, or the male and the female energies, because they're both intertwined. They're both intertwined in physicality and spirituality all at the same time. So to go on, it's, I'm talking about from the inside of me, those aspects tied together like that in an all encompassing way. And that's what I'm trying to communicate from, from that perspective. So the, the masculine side, the left brain, uh, the logic, the sun, the pillar of strength, however you want to put it, the left brain, with the perception coming out of the right eye, the right side. That part, that part is most responsible, it seems to me, for protection. It's the protection aspect of the male energy. Number one, protection of self. That physical dragon energy, that energy that's linked right up there to the base of the spine, up into the reptilian part of the brain, of our brain that's reptilian, mammalian, and then the neocortex, the three aspects of that brain in that manner of looking at it. It's tied right to that, and that's the instinctual part of protection. So that's protection of self first, then protection of other, right? In a non-aggressive way, in a, you know what I'm saying? In an, okay. Uh, let me not get too far, but, but it's that aspect, that protection energy that, that's in all of us, male and female. It's that aspect that if twisted or if you feel less than in that area, let me put it like that. If you feel less than, you will look outside yourself for protection because you don't feel that you have the ability to protect yourself or other for whatever for whatever made up reason. And what comes from that is fear. Fear is what drives that. So if you're taught to fear the outside, to fear this, fear that, and call for help, call for someone to protect, that's how they get you looking outside yourself, whoever they are, I don't wanna get in today, this is from me to whoever, so, so let, me not, let me not go there. Um, but that's very real. If that, if that masculine energy doesn't feel sufficient to protect first self and then have the ability to protect the loved ones, well then that's an internal hole that has to be filled. And fearing that hole by not filling it and looking outward for someone else to fill it keeps that hole in place. So you're always looking outward so you're not fully in control of your energies not fully responsible for your energies, for your body, for your spirituality, for your own protection, which we all are supposed to be. The feminine side of that is the same, but different. That's the nurture aspect. That's the aspect that created this life and physicality. That's creation. That's nurture to take care of, to feed and support and nurture it so it can grow this life that starts with self. And then it happens for loved ones, but it has to be self first. Because if you look outward, or if that gets kind of turned in a, in a wrong perspective, that can turn to greed. Then you want more of what you need to nurture yourself or other, or just greed in general, your take, take because that's the give and take part the feminine side the right side the creative side the moon the pillar of beauty 
if you will. It, it doesn't matter. So realizing that and how those aspects of protection and nurture, they, those energies that are supposed to be intertwined physically and spiritually, so we're fully responsible for protection and nurturing of self first in a loving, caring way. And then to be able to do the same for other in a love, loving and caring way, not in a place of fear where you're directing harm at to stop some, some boogeyman or, or you're preemptively attacking this or that, you know, whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter because the truth of the matter is that's immoral. It's immoral to go out and cause harm against other life unless you are actively protecting yourself or someone you love who is actively just already being attacked. You don't preemptively hurt to protect. That's how the energies are misused inside. That's how my energies were misused during my life because I didn't realize fully I wasn't fully responsible for myself because I didn't know how yet. So, and, and knowing that for me, I was looking outward, I wanted to be that protector because that energy was driven in me and I wanted to be that protector guy, fantasy, movie reel that was playing in my head because I didn't fully realize that because I didn't fully love myself enough to nurture myself, and get to know myself and what I was and what this whole thing was, I was just out running blindly. And that's what I did for so long. And that's why, because I was so cut off to the feminine aspect, that aspect of me that I thought was so separate and alien, because, I mean, it is. Because I'm a physical male, I'm not pretending to be a female, and I'm not pretending to know anything about how the inner workings of the female are. I wouldn't dare be that presumptuous, not nowadays. And that's why I'm only speaking from, from what I've come to understand about me and tie together about me, for me, but how it also, to me, relates no matter what the gender is, because we're all the same things, doing the same things in the same place. So there must be a lot more commonality than we've been led to believe. And there is, because the beliefs are the lies that separate us all. And they start by separating us from ourself. Because belief in something outside that's not true, it's not in line with truth, it's unnatural, well, that belief is automatically causing a hiccup between the feeling of the heart that knows and the mind that thinks it knows better because it's been told something. And there's a disconnect now energetically because that third pillar, what's that third pillar is wisdom. That pillar is your spine. That pillar is your energies, masculine and feminine, the dragon, the snake, the intertwined snake that go up the staff, that's your kundalini dragon energy here in physicality that is trying to travel up and down your spine to communicate messages of feeling and thought back and forth in tandem, intertwined, all at the same time. And once you really get that inside where that's the only place you can find it and realize that that's the dragon that's how you tame the dragon because you are the dragon because you are a dragon in a world of if we're all dragons we're all dragons if we're all people we're all people if we're all men and women we're all just men and women if we're all human beings we're all human beings doesn't matter what label you put on it we're made up of all the same things in one package with one aspect or another to present to the world, but to realize they're both intertwined in us all. <clears throat> so, 
Okay, I got going there. I want to read something else here. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. So the divine masculine and feminine, I wrote after after that. All right, I wrote, both must be fully intertwined to come full circle in the, in the inner standing of thought and feeling. Without full control of thought and feeling and or lack of understanding, it can cause incorrect thought, feeling, emotion. Emotion can easily manifest in the individual and further be reacted to or acted upon incorrectly and or immorally. That's important. Now the full circle thing, I'm sure people have seen the picture of the snake eating the tail and all that. Same thing. It's bringing your own understanding, your own, you're gaining full responsibility of all your mental, physical, and spiritual faculties. That's coming full circle. What's that also represent? That full circle is physical life to death. One complete cycle here right? So it's all cycles of things, it seems. So the point is, before the snake gets around to eating its tail in the physical world and you die, the goal is to bring the energies full circle to where the snake meets the tail, realizes, oh, this is what all this is, mind, body, spirit, mind, body, spirit, and more, and infinity in a physical body that's finite. That's the tying together of things. That's where it comes to where you're in this world, but not of it. That's where I've been able. Now, let me go back to I, because that that is finding that place. All my temptations have gone away. I don't get tempted by thoughts <clears throat> of wants why I want this, I want that. For me, that's all gone now. It's only need. I either need this or I don't need this. Or I would like this or I would like that. But really, really it's not even things I would like anymore because they're not needs. And really, I've gotten to that point to where I am just perfectly fine with what I have and I don't need more. And further, I don't want I don't want more because I, I, I see what happens from the greed aspect of things when people want to take more and more and more and they want to hoard that. They want to hoard it like a dragon because their energy, their dragon energy, it's twisted a little bit. It's a little bit too strong in one way. And in which way? It's the way that's pulling them toward the greed. And it's none, it's unnecessary. It, it, it was taught incorrectly. All of this was taught incorrectly. And, and that kind of stuff, when, when you're going after greed or you're acting out of fear, that's when you, you're, you actually do immoral actions and, and your reactions can be immoral or incorrect. And how? How are they immoral? <coughs> Excuse me. They're immoral if they cause harm to another. So... Now, I'm not talking about pointing out if someone's being a total fool and you're pointing out something to them and saying, hey, look, you're like way out of line on this or out of the other, and here's what the fuck it is. I'm not talking about harm in that way because if you're trying to convey something to someone that's to help them because it's in line with truth and you know it to be true and you have no agenda, well, then that's fine. That's where the whole righteous anger thing comes from. Because it's okay to feel. It's, that's the most important thing is to feel all the time and to feel deeply. And to use that as the place where you're coming from all the time, not up here. Up here just should be used to process all that out there. But you come from a place of feeling so you avoid doing something that is going to hurt another which will instantly do damage to your energy, to the self. I did it to myself, plenty. So that's why I mean I'm talking from experience. 
<clears throat> and experiences vary. I get it. I just think it's, <clears throat> for me, it's real important for me to share uh, as truthfully and as clear, uh, as clear as I can, I guess. And I'm still having trouble with, with how clear it is inside, the way the words flow and mesh together, the way I see things and the way I get things inside. I'm still really working on transferring that to vocal cord energy, to getting it out to everyone because I, I spent so much of my life as the introvert, the, the not speaking up, the not, but always looking and observing things and being real deep, but not communicating. So I'm still working on this, this as well. But uh, I think I'll stop there for now. I think that's probably good enough. What do you think? You think? Uh, Man. As soon as I stop, I'll think of more stuff I wanted to say that I should have said. Man, I don't. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I could go in.